This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone to my livery redesign series and review. We've already looked at the Haas, we've already redesigned the Haas today. We're looking at the Red Bull, we're looking at the new Aston Martin and we're redesigning both together in a nice little video. So let's not waste any time, let's crack on. First look at the Red Bull. Now again, to clarify, this is definitely not the final car physically. We know this, this is the exact model that we've seen the F1 Authentics livery on. This isn't actually to the most current set of regulations either. This is obviously just a show car that Red Bull must have, I don't know, purchased from Formula One. I am not in any way surprised because of course this is a huge regulation shift and teams are going to keep their cards as close to their chest as possible when it comes to the physical design of their cars. So I don't begrudge Red Bull for doing that. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the vast majority of teams from here on in with their launches just doing the exact same thing. But yeah, first impressions, look, obviously the composition of delivery is very much the same as it has been for years now. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. It's a banging livery. This looks decent. I thought the 2021 Red Bull was an absolute banger. I really think they've got a proper strong brand identity on the F1 grid now, even when they did that white one-off livery. Absolutely love that. But yeah, the most interesting things to talk about here are the sponsors, because as you can see from the side pod, there has been a bit of a change up. Oracle has moved from being just in front of the side inlets, like it was last season, to massive, like, Huge. Look at how big that logo is. That is gargantuan. Now, of course, with Honda leaving Red Bull, that opens up rear wing space. So you've got the Red Bull logo up there. So perhaps Red Bull were like, look, maybe we can offer up this side pod space that we haven't done in the past because they usually have the Red Bull logo there. It's not been since like 2014, I think, when they had Infinity on the side pod. Since then, we've always seen Red Bull there, but it's Oracle now in a deal that is reported to be worth 500 million dollars. I'm not sure if that's per year. I'll put an article on screen so that you can see, but this is a lot of money that Oracle are throwing at Red Bull Racing, so no wonder the logo is so bloody massive. Otherwise, the only real changes, again, are specifically to brand logos. So Mobile One has got a red O. HRC, which I believe is Honda Racing Company or something, that's on the side as well, so they still have a little bit of a presence on the car. But yeah, other than that, the composition is pretty much the same, which again, I don't have a problem with. That front though, that nose, that looks proper F2, doesn't it? Where you've got the long yellow bit of nose, that does look very F2. Look, I said it before, I'll say it again. I love the Red Bull livery. For me, this is an easy 8 out of 10. I've decided I'm going to be a bit more stingy with the, uh, the values here. So I will be giving stuff 1s and 2s, but, you know, to get a 10 has to be absolutely exceptional. This is great. I love it. 8 out of 10, easy, fantastic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's what we've got. Now time for my rendition of the 2022 Red Bull. As you can see, I have pushed the boat out a bit, okay? I've done something very different. Do I prefer this to the original? Probably not, but I wanted to try something different, okay? So first and foremost, Tomo, what have you done with the Halo, okay? Now look, I know Oracle signed this big deal, but again, I wanted to steer away from the big Oracle on the side because then where do you put the Red Bull logo? I just want to show a changed up situation, okay? So instead of a massive Oracle on the side, I've been like, well, okay, Oracle... Their brand color is red on a white background or vice versa. So make the halo white, dedicate the halo to Oracle. Is a thought, where do we think the Squarespace logo would work best on this livery? Here you go, look at that. Hey, beautiful, look, it fits in there perfectly. Love that. But as much as it does look good on the car, what does Squarespace actually do? Well, they are the all-in-one website building platform that I've been using for years for my website. And I think if you're interested in making your own website, whether it's a blog, portfolio, online store, doesn't matter, Squarespace is the place I would recommend you go. 24 seven customer support, drag and drop functionality, it's an absolute breeze. And the best thing is when you do head to squarespace.com and set up your account and start having a play around with the functionality, you don't have to pay anything. It's only when you wanna put that website live to everyone, the world to see that you do. And when that time comes, use the discount code TOMOF1 or click the link in the top line of the description for 10% off your first website or domain. 
We saw the gradient halo work really well on the white special edition Honda Red Bull last season. So I've adapted that to this, but I've also brought that round to the back and it kind of fades out here. And then we've got Oracle on the side. It also means, because Cash App and Tag Heuer are also sponsors of Red Bull, so they can shine a bit more on the halo as well. I feel like this white halo is either a love it or hate it kind of thing. I think I like it, but obviously I've looked at this a lot. So let me know in the comments below. Side pods, we've got pretty standard set up here. So Red Bull on the side, again, Roush exactly where it is. Mobile One, I've moved to there because Mobile One on the front wing end plate doesn't really fit that space. Puma logo on the other hand fits that space an absolute treat. So that's come down here. And red and white are Puma's brand colors as well. So again, it's it works perfectly. Towards the front, now I've done this before with a Rebel redesign in the past, but actually using the ball logo on the front wing instead of the big red ball. We've got Red Bull on the uh, rear wing, as you can see up there. So having this down here, Look, I, I really like the way that works. I like the way they do it already with the yellow nose, but this is just essentially kind of a reversed version of that. Logos on the front nose. I've also had a little bit of a, I've come up with my own little Red Bull powertrains logo. Obviously we know it's now the Oracle Red Bull racing team, but Red Bull powertrains does have a logo. So I've incorporated that here. Nice little red line around the front wing. I like that as well. We come to the back and we've got Tag Heuer up here. They've always been a big sponsor of Red Bull at Tag. So it made sense for them to kind of fill that space up there. Pokestars there, come around to the back and we've got Tezos, Oracle, Esso. Um, again, similar setup for the rear wing end plates. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That is my very Marmite rendition of the 2022 Red Bull because I just wanted to change it up. What do you think? What do you rate this out of 10? And what do you rate the real thing out of 10? Now it's currently 11.23 on Thursday. So the Aston Martin livery will be dropping in about two and a half hours. So I've got a live stream to do. I'll see you again in a few hours. And we're back. The car is live. We watched it along. The livery reveal. It's pretty nice, isn't it? We've got the front angle, we've got the side angle, we've got the perspective angle, we've got the top angle, it's all there. And not only are we seeing the livery, but this car has shown a lot more than just that. It has shown a lot of the actual body, the shape of the car to expect for 2022. Let's talk about the livery first though. So the green has been changed up. It is lighter, it is brighter than it was before. The lime is back. The fundamental design with the kind of swooshing line down the side remains, but there's more lime dotted around the car. I like it. I don't think the Aston Martin logos on the side needed to be lime personally. I think they could have stayed white. But they've added a bit of lime on the top. They've added a bit of lime on the front wing and the front wing end plates as well. It's carbon hits on the front wing, which I like. And again, everything below that lime swoosh is dark, is carbon as well. I still think the numbers look clunky. They're the same as last year. Didn't like them then, don't like them now. And there is a lot going on, like Aramco, Cognizant, Peroni, Crypto, all big logos, JCB, Aston Martin as well. They're taking up a lot of space on the car. It is very jam-packed, but... It's an advertisement board, so it is what it is. For me, it's definitely a step up from last season. I like it. I like it more than I did last year's car. I think this works better. I'm giving it a 7.5. I can't rank it higher than the Red Bull. That's still a very, very good score considering 10 is perfection. I mean, I'd be surprised if any car reaches a 10 this season. It's a positive step. It's not quite on the level of the Red Bull for me, but it's still very, very nice. But again, let's talk about the actual car itself because, well, starting with the front wing, I mean, I do find it a bit uh, jarring, the, the level of ride height on the front wing. Maybe that is just a byproduct of ground effects. Maybe not. I don't know. It definitely didn't look as jarring on the actual real car that they were presenting with Seb and Lance stood next to it. So maybe that is just the renders. That was a bit weird. But yeah, look, it's interesting to see that front wing's got a bit more about it than we've seen on any of the other cars, really. We've got these squared off side pod inlets and then some like fake ones here. We do wonder like, hmm, what does that mean? How much of this is legit and how much of this is fake? You've got the huge ventilation on the side pod on the top of that, which means obviously no brand sponsorships can go on that part of the car. But I mean, there's enough. There's enough on the car. We don't need more. You can really see the rear wing where it's very flat, but then it really jumps up. And, you know, this is the first car that's showing off the DRS on the new cars. You can actually see the actuator. So, yeah, it's refreshing to see the car not just on the base template, but again, going forward, I wouldn't anticipate anything other than the base car being used because, you know, this must have been an earlier version of the actual car. You know what I mean? Because they're not going to give all that information away, are they? 
Actually, that's wrong. This is the actual car. This is the real Aston Martin and they're running it today at Silverstone. So that's what Aston Martin actually did. Now let's look at my version. Yes, I have added blue to the car, Jordan 191 vibes. Okay, look, with Aramco and Cognizant, who both use blue as part of their branding, I thought it made sense to stick a bit of blue here. So I have. I've kept the lime as well. Again, more Jordan 191. I th feel like they could have done that if they wanted to, definitely. Maybe as a special edition version, that would make complete sense. Just like the Golf McLaren bringing the blue for a one-off race this year. Wouldn't be surprised. But yes, yeah, so starting with the front wing, I've gone with a little bit of carbon in there to kind of reflect their actual livery. We've got the Cognizant, we've got the Aston Martin. Had to put the lime surround on the front wing because it just looks too good to not. And also the numbering, I've changed up the font. I've gone for this kind of more retro style because I think it fits Aston Martin and it just looks better than the horrible font that they use. I'm sorry. Come around to the side and we've got the Aston Martin in the same place, but then again, Aramco is the main sponsor on the side pod and Cognizant's up here, whereas in real life it's reversed. Aston Martin there. Perone is kind of taking a step back here and crypto.com's just a tiny little sponsor here because I'm not I'm not a crypto kind of guy. But I thought dotting some of these logos down along here was nice. Bombardier's up there as well. And again, you've got the number five up here. JCB full color, that's not going to change. You know what? I've, I've learned to love the JCB logo here. And then rear wing wise, big Aramco rear wing because you haven't really got much of a presence for them on the front less densely packed with sponsors or at least with big sponsor logos there's still a plenty there's still plenty of sponsors here but just not quite as many i've preserved that lime kind of swoosh on the uh, halo as well because i think that works well with the aston martin logo up there and um yeah there we have it that is my interpretation of what is a super nice aston martin do I prefer this? I mean, I definitely prefer the physical shape of this car body. Do I prefer the livery? I think this would work great as a one-off. A little throwback for Silverstone, maybe bring back the Jordan 191 for a race. That'd be nice. Like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you think I did a better job, worse job out of 10? Let me know. McLaren's up next. My name is Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Tell her.